Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Vivek Shah in this segment. He's joining us here as a faculty member at Harvard Medical School to talk about his recent research, clinical outcomes and survivorship of distal femur replacements using cemented versus cementless femoral stems, and also uh, uh, research optimizing spinal anesthesia formulation in same-day discharge total joint arthroplasty patients. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. How are you, doctor? Good. Thank you for having me. You're joining us here from Harvard Medical School. Talk a bit about your professional background and your role at Harvard. Uh, Thanks again for having me. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I am currently uh, working at Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is one of the um, four hospitals that's part of the Harvard uh, teaching residency program. I've been here for about four years. Uh, I've been in Boston for about 20 years, and I am a specifically an adult reconstruction surgeon, um, fellowship trained. So I uh, primarily do hip and knee replacements. So uh, we have uh, medical students, we have residents, and we have fellows who are spending an extra year uh, learning how to do hip and knee replacements. How prevalent are hip and knee replacements? We all know about the joke of getting old and having to have a hip replaced. Are these two of the most common reconstructive surgeries out there? They are. As far as the field of orthopedics and and all of the surgical specialties, um, if you look at most of the projections, you know, uh, hip and knee replacements are increasing exponentially for a number of reasons. One, as you mentioned, is uh, as we get older, uh, our joints tend to wear out. But uh, in addition to that, you know, we're all living longer. And surprisingly, now we're doing hip and knee replacements in younger and younger patients. I think part of it is that we're more active and we have injuries uh, at a younger age. And then obviously the other part of this is the obesity epidemic in in the United States uh, leading to people having uh, earlier joint replacements. You talk about having these injuries due to more activity at a younger age. If these injuries go unchecked, are they bound to need a hip replacement? You don't think they're as serious when you're 30 and so you don't get it checked out or anything. Yeah, I think also a lot of times um, people are having surgery. You know, we look at all these athletes on TV having their ACLs reconstructed or meniscus surgeries for specifically for knees. A lot of them uh, go on to develop arthritis at a younger age than if they had not torn their ACL or not torn their meniscus. So I think that's part of it. You know, whether it's checked or not uh, may not change the outcome of it. But I think the fact that we're having these injuries Um, leads to arthritis at an earlier age than if they didn't have those injuries. And I think we used to, you know, tell these younger patients that they could, you know, just deal with the pain um, until they were older because we were worried about, you know, how long joint replacements would last. And we didn't want to do them in patients that were too young. What we've learned now is that our implants are much better than they were 20 or 30 years ago. So we're able to get these uh, patients back their quality of life without the concern about implants failing like we used to. So I think uh, technology has helped us a lot over the last 20 years. Now, although the failure rate, uh, as you say, has has decreased, what are some of the risks when dealing with uh, these hip and knee replacements that just don't seem to go away? I think the, the biggest thing in, in joint replacements, and this is, you know, 20 years ago, probably to this day and age, um, which stays as we worry about infections. You know, we're putting, uh, you know, metal and plastic into people's bodies. And I think the concern for infection will always be there. The, the positive is that, again, over the last, you know, two decades, the risk of infection has decreased exponentially. Uh, and now we're much better at diagnosing and treating them than we were 20 or 30 years ago. So I think that's the biggest concern for most adult reconstruction surgeons. Ephemeral stems. Explain to us what femoral stems are and what is, has been the controversy behind cemented versus cementless femoral stems. Yeah. So, you know, when we're talking about some of the research, um, you know, that we presented at AOS specifically for distal femur replacements, you know, cement has traditionally been the way that you fix components to bone. It's like a grout. Uh, it provides immediate stability. The, the downside of that is over the course of, you know, decades, it can loosen. So over the last several years, I mean, I, I guess I should say over the last decade, we've transitioned to using more cement less with the idea being that we have components now that grow to our bone. And once 
that has happened, they should stay stable for a long period of time, which would reduce the risk of late loosening, which is one of the issues we see in, in specifically knee replacements over the past several years. And when you say components that grow to the bone, are we talking organic from donors or something that's been synthesized from chemicals that isn't the traditional cement? No. So it's actually, it's a good question. It's actually a coating on the implants that mimics the um, the uh, anatomy of bone that allows the bone to grow into it. It's like a matrix that the bone grows into. So we don't have to actually put any additional um, cement-like material or fluid. It's just a coating on the outside of uh, of implants that allows bone to grow to it. And, you know, traditional bone healing, if you've ever broken a bone, we tell people it takes about six weeks for bone to heal. It takes about the same amount of time for your bone to grow to the implants. And once that has happened effectively, um, again, the implants should be stable for the, the length of their duration. And is that part of the reason that the rate of infection has decreased as well? Uh, I'm not sure that the two are related. I think Mm -hmm. that in general, our surgical techniques have gotten much better. You know, uh, 20 years ago or maybe even 30 years ago, you know, hip replacements would be a three or four hour operation. And we know that the longer an operation goes, the higher the risk of infection. Whereas now, you know, hip replacements are a one hour operation, which significantly has reduced the risk of infection. Now, in arthroplasty patients, uh, you talked also about optimizing spinal anesthesia formulation in same-day discharge of these patients. Yeah, so for me, this has been a a big focus of my practice. Uh, You know, over the last five years, um, I've been fortunate to be part of uh, creating an outpatient joint program at the Brigham. And I think part of my desire in doing that was I saw that, you know, length of stay was decreasing. And we found that by decreasing the length of stay, we're actually, you know, recovering patients faster. They're getting back to their life faster, and it reduces the risk of infection and all the complications that come along with being in the hospital. And then, you know, lo and behold, you know, a couple of years later, after we started creating this program, a global pandemic came along. And then for a big period of time, we were only allowed to do surgeries in patients that were leaving the hospital on the day of surgery. So... You know, there are many factors that go into optimizing the ability to get people home on the day of surgery, and one of them is the anesthetic that we provide. And so you have to provide a short-acting spinal anesthetic in order to make sure that once the patients get to the recovery room, they can be up and walking, pass through the things that they need to to clear physical therapy and get home on the day of surgery. So our focus for the paper that we presented at AOS was two different formulations of spinal anesthetic to see if there was a difference in length of stay between the mepivacaine and the ropivacaine. And what were the findings? What we actually found was, you know, we looked at um, partial knee replacement patients. We looked at total knee replacement patients and total hip replacement patients. And overall, the two formulations did not have a difference in how long it took to recover patients and get them out of the hospital. There was a difference between procedures, so hip replacements, took longer to recover than knee replacement patients. The one thing that we did, um, which was sort of a, uh, a factor that we would like to change in our next study is that hip replacement patients only got rapivacaine and part of it was that it's a longer acting spinal. And as we get better and more consistent with our surgical times, now we've actually started using the rapivacaine in our hip replacements. And I would predict that now um, our hip replacement patients would be recovered just as fast as our knee replacement patients in the recovery room now that we're using the mepivacaine. This determination was made because of having to have patients out of the hospital due to the pandemic. Once the pandemic uh, is behind us or we're living with it in some type of uh, everyday normal way, do you think that these hip replacement and knee replacement patients will once again be allowed to stay more than one day? Yeah, it's a good question. And same day discharge is not for all patients. I think there are some patients that are older, some patients that are sicker that will never be good candidates for for same day discharge. But what we've found over the last, you know, five years is that patients actually do better. And when you ask them 
uh, about whether or not they would want to stay in the hospital. Patients don't want to do it anymore. So I, I would predict that this is a change, a significant change in how we're going to be treating patients moving forward and that more than 50% of patients will be going home on the day of surgery, even after the pandemic is resolved, uh, because it's just patient preference. And we've also shown that patient satisfaction is higher and many of the complications that may come from being in the hospital for the for these healthier patients are now avoided. So I think that we're gonna see a, a dramatic change in, the, in how many patients are gonna be going home in the future, and this will probably maintain itself and continue to move forward as we're going to be discharging more and more people on the day of surgery. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Dr. Shah, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more. Sure. You know, uh, our outpatient joint program is at uh, www.bwh.org uh, slash arthroplasty. And you can certainly uh, go online and, and read a lot about same-day discharge uh, on the uh, AAHKS website, which is the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons. And learn more about Mass General at www.massgeneralbrigham.org. Doctor, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm hoping that we'll have an opportunity to speak again. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Vivek Shah. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.